So when we read the interface documentation as a contract, we're really reading it from the perspective of the implementer of the interface. Now let's read it as an abstraction barrier, or we'll interpret it as an abstraction barrier. This is like, you know, uh, like, you know, the literature or something like that. We're reading the same thing and we're reading it different ways and interpreting it in different ways. So there's a difference between implementing the interface, which is what you do when you actually say, my class implements this interface, and then using the interface. Now, both implementer and user are going to come to this same documentation. They're both going to come here to remind themselves what actually happens here, right? What are the semantics behind this method and what happens when I call it? But their uses are different. So if I'm the uh, implementer of comparable, I need to figure out what my class has to do. If I'm the user of a class that implements comparable, what I want to do is figure out what can I do with it? And so what I would come here and I would say, okay, if I have an object that's comparable, that implements comparable, I can call compare to, and in Kotlin we could do that just by using the less than or greater than uh, operators, which is pretty cool. I can call compare to, and I can pass another instance of the same class typically, and I get a result that indicates what order they should go in. Now, that's all I need to know about that class, right? And if I'm going to use comparable, if I'm going to use the class and implements comparable to do something, I need to be able to, to operate on that class with only this piece of information. Now, it turns out, as we've been hinting, there are a lot of things I can do even if I only have that piece of information. So, for example, if I can put two types of things, two instances of a certain type in order, I can sort an entire array. If I can put two things in order, I can also run algorithms like binary search. So, you know, the famous example where I do binary search through a dictionary, what's inherent in that example is that the underlying data is sorted. There is a total ordering over whatever is in the dictionary, the phone book, whatever it is. If that's not sorted, you're going to have to go page by page. There's going to be no other way to do it. So, you know, that example is, that, that feature of that example is not highlighted very often, but binary search, being able to look for things efficiently, and binary search is actually super efficient compared with many other types of search algorithms, but that relies on the ability to put things in some type of order, right? And that guides the search process. So there are a lot of things I can do once I know that two instances of a class can be compared to each other. And... But the other thing that's cool here is that I don't care how it happens, right? So on some level, there are two, you know, one of the things that's so powerful about interfaces is that it unlocks this collaboration between two completely unconnected code bases. So there's all this code in the world. There's all these classes that implement compare. Now, there's probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of Java classes and Kotlin classes that implement this method. And there's people that maintain those classes and they have decided how to implement compare to. They have written the code to implement compare to. Okay, so that's one group. Those are the, the uh, implementers, um, the providers of the interface. Now there's also users of the interface. It's all this code out in the world that implements sorting and binary search and a bunch of other cool things. And all that code uses the fact that classes can be compared to each other for order. Okay, so you've got the code over here that's built by people that are, that are using the comparable interface. Now, of course, there's overlap. Sometimes it's the same people writing both pieces of code. But my point is, you've got code using the interface, you've got code implementing the interface. And the neat thing is, all we have to agree on is what's in this document, this contract that we're all signing up for. This is sometimes known as an abstraction barrier. There's code on one side that can do its thing, sort an array. There's code on the other side that can do its thing, put two items in order. And there's nothing else that those two people need to agree on except for how the comparable interface works. As long as we all agree on this, we can have this incredible sort of magnification of our efforts because all the code that I write to sort works with all the classes that implement comparable, right? You don't have to know how my code works. All you have to do is implement comparable. I don't need to know how your code compares to instances. All I need to do is use the compare to method that you provide. And this is one of the reasons why interfaces are so powerful is that they unlock this really, really effective, very high efficiency collaboration between two groups of people that otherwise know nothing about each other, right? There's code in the world that you will use written by people you would never meet that works because we've come up with a small number of agreements about how things work at the interface at the boundary. And so when you go on and you build things and you create software with other people, a lot of negotiation happens at these places where things come together. This is a place where there's a lot of agreement, there's a lot of documentation. And once you do that, 
you have two groups of people that are now completely free to work independently from each other, do cool stuff, as long as they maintain this small number of agreements about how their code is going to communicate where it needs to at these interfaces.